Welcome to the dead ball area. James O'Connor returned to Super Rugby duty last week with a fairly solid performance for the Queensland Reds against the Highlanders. We're going to look at some of the key components of his performance, starting with the attack. We all know O'Connor is a brilliant open field runner. He's strong, well balanced and possesses a devastating burst of acceleration that gets him past defenders. He's a difficult player to pin down. Early in the game, the Reds were struggling for momentum. The ball became scrappy, but O'Connor sees the Highlanders' defence has finally been stretched and we have Ford's defending space, no guards on the left, and he rewinds against the flow and makes a lovely break. It's a brilliant piece of vision. First he steps inside Dixon, leaving him grabbing at air, and then once through the tackle line, he then steps Aaron Smith and turns Bin Smith inside out. It's a fantastic piece of skill, and we can see his one-on-one -on -one skills really click into gear and take over. He keeps the ball in two hands, scans his options the whole time, and eventually he moves Smith off his line just enough that he has to adjust his defensive run. And as soon as he sees Smith isn't square, he steps onto his near shoulder, breaks the tackle before he's finally hauled down by Hardy. We can see there's a huge gaining ground by O'Connor, and it's at a key moment in the game. And the whole sequence is only spoiled by a great steal by Nahalo. Now individual brilliance is one thing, but a good 10 needs to fit into and execute the team systems, and we get some glimpses of O'Connor's decision making and execution early in the first half. In this clip, the Reds are on the attack, and as the ball is recycled, defence looks well set. But if we remove the ruck guards from the defensive equation, we can see it's actually a 4 on 3, with Osborne in between Turn and Kuradrani. Now the Reds could go 1 on 1 and hope their ball transfer from straight running is sufficient to preserve the space, but as O'Connor brings it to the tackle line, he sees Fekitoa has bitten in early and fires a pinpoint pass to Turner. The key here is how late he leaves the pass, bringing his runners right onto the tackle line and tempting Fekitoa to lunge out looking for the man and ball tackle. It's also worth noting that he's on the outside foot as he passes, and that keeps him square, balanced and his arms up, which means he passes through moving his torso and punches the pass to Turner. It's a nicely executed piece of skill, and even though it's only a half break, the Highlanders are stretched and scrambling back to cover, allowing the Reds to get over the gain line. The ball is recycled and this time we see the opposite of before. He's looking for speed and cocks the pass and drops onto his inside leg, losing all power and accuracy. It's a shame as the Reds have developed some real momentum and it eventually comes to nothing. Now this time O'Connor squanders a 3 on 4 to have a go himself. It's a poor decision and with no obvious first receiver, Guinea has a dart and the Highlanders turn it over. We hear coaches talk a lot about small margins in games and this is one of those occasions. The Reds going from a prime attacking situation to a turnover in one bad decision. Defence has become as large a part of the 10's game as game management and distribution, and O'Connor is a strong defender, but defending in the 10 channel is very confrontational, and attacking the 9-10 seam is one of the easiest ways to get your team over the gain line. Here though, we see how it should be done, and O'Connor gets off the line nice and early bringing Emery to ground right on the gain line, and that's good because despite running a phase into the 10-12 channel, the Highlanders' exit strategy has been stopped before it even gets going. It leaves them clearing from the exact same place as the scrum, resulting in a really poor clearance. A few minutes later, the red defence pressures the Highlanders into clearing their half, and O'Connor has read the game perfectly, drops back into the pocket and executes an almost perfect kick and chase. It's not all perfect though, and we see here he puts his team under some undue pressure by taking on a well-executed kick chase from the Highlanders. Overall though, he's an intelligent defender and his final clip is a great piece of defence. We see him jockeying backwards to give himself the better hit, but we can see he keeps himself square, which is important. He can step off of either foot and use either shoulder to execute a perfect tackle. It's just good recycling that sends the Highlanders in for the try, but look who's back on his feet and desperately trying to make the cover tackle. So first game back, and I'm of the opinion this is a pretty solid performance by O'Connor. Sure, there's no brushing over there with some mistakes made, but I think the positives far outweigh the negatives, and it'll be interesting to see how he fits into the equation when Cooper returns. I think there is potential for a move to 12, but if his Wallabies ambitions are genuine, then the Reds will probably facilitate a move to the back three. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter.